Hey guys, yeah, welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here we have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs who are leading tech startups in Africa. This is episode four of season two, and I'm so stoked that we've gotten this far. This means we've done 14 videos over. Now in this episode, we're going to be speaking to Dami Lola of Shotlass. Hi Dami. Hi. Hi you Are you excited? Hi. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to learn all we can about Dami today, about her business, about her journey, and you know, whatever else she wants to be able to share. Awesome. Alright guys, so stay and watch the video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm PC Timmy, a change maker, professional and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Hi Dami. So Thank let's start. You know when people are dating and they do tell me about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me about yourself. Like who is who is Dami? Where do you where do you come Dami. from? What's your background story? How would you describe yourself in five phrases? Whichever one you want to answer, however you want to answer it, that's fine. I think that I think this past week I I, I was telling somebody that that you know you think I'm a small girl. I'm not though. I'm an old woman in a small girl's body. What does old woman mean? <laughs> so I think because I grew up you know amongst really older folks, my sisters and my parents. I've kind of added about 10 to 20 years to my year. So um, my ideals, my values, my, you know, are kind of like a mix of both, you know, modern and ancient. <laughs> it is ancient. Yeah. Okay. So in aside old woman and a mix of <laughs> modern and ancient, what other ways would you describe yourself? Maybe in five phrases okay. or five words. What best describes that mean? So I, I okay, I would um, say I'm a mix of an introvert and extrovert. Okay. So I was that mean what that means is that I talk when I need to talk and I can over talk <laughs> and I I can be cool and calm and collected when I need to be. Mm. Um, I'm, I can be really fun, you know, playful and at the same time I can be very strict and in quotes bitchy. So a lot of contradictory. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm a mix of all of that and but i always find balance and i know how to balance you know my life <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long have you been doing entrepreneurship i would say as far back as primary school right just random you know they taught us how to make beads i can remember that i sold beads to my neighbors i i also used to draw animation but i didn't think of selling that but i know that you know i and then in secondary school um, as social prefects, we were the first people to um, to create a show. It was an Anglican school, so imagine um, creating a paid show that everybody was going to go, you know, and attend. So that was my, I think that was my first. I can remember, you know, very clearly that we went to Seba Cafe. We printed tickets to be sold in school. I you know we got, you know, artists, like Christian artists, that are going to perform. And we sold, I don't think we make any profit, but at least but yes, it balanced. It was business. <laughs> and then entering in um, university, I think, yeah, I did a lot of buying and selling clothes, bags. And during my internship, when I um, served in an oil and gas company, I, I cashed out on perfumes. <laughs> <laughs> on perfumes to men and ladies, ah, I sold you a lot out. of cash out. You know, um, but you know, this startup life started immediately after school, and it was because. And what year was this? Um, I think 2013. Okay. And I think that what really launched out my entrepreneurship career was um, a program I attended at the age of 19. Mm. That year, I attended the University of Lagos, by the way. Okay. I studied chemical engineering. That year, we had one very long ASO strike. That we didn't have any, we didn't understand what was going to happen. Whether we're going to go back to school, we're going to we should jackpot, we, we, we didn't even know. But I had, I have older sisters that you know, 10, 14 years older than me. One of them says, "Come, you can't continue staying at home and doing babysitting job. Mm. Go and you know, do some training." The first training mm -hmm. I attended was Desta Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. I think I was the youngest in the class then, because usually training where people you know limit their work or. Um, to them to go and do. So I was there, you know, I was exposed to things like innovation, you know, creating value, understanding what your passion was, 
I was so at the end of that program, you know, I, I, I had so much energy and I thought I was going to be able to solve all Nigeria's problems. A lot of kind of things that they told us. And to layer that on an attended platform mm -hmm. um, that year, and that year they brought some, I think some Forbes guys, they were not Nigerians, they were um, um, African Americans or Black Americans that um, came to Nigeria to talk about technology. That was my first time hearing things about, you know, the dot com world. Right. Um, I didn't understand all what they were talking about. but. What caught my attention was the lady that came up and said, oh, that she, she was 31 and she had about five companies. I'm like, eh, <laughs> me too, I want to, ah, ah. Yeah, it's not bad. If the lady can do it, I can do it as well. And I think she was using technology and I can't even remember what she looks like. I can't remember what her name is. But what she said, stock. Yes, stock. And I, I became obsessed with um, being an entrepreneur. In fact, I can remember I was trying to get a business card. I didn't have any business. So <laughs> I wanted to have a business card. <laughs> yeah. In, in, and when I went back to school, when they called up the assistant. So when I, making when I finished school, the first, you know, my, right from school, I loved to look good. Yeah. And because I studied engineering, the few ones I love to look good used to amplify because there are not plenty. <laughs> and there are a few ladies, you know. So I, I thought, you know, I had this idea of, um, Helping people find find a way to buy things. So mm. nobody has done it yet. I think they they something like that. Can where to get it or something mm. where you can post a picture and then immediately people will be able to tag you on where who is selling Ooh, and right. how it's selling. So I didn't have it, 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 I didn't have any idea on how to make money, but I was so convinced that people needed that kind of platform. Mm. So that was the first thing I was you know trying to work on. With my non tech knowledge, the website guy messed everything. So the guy built. A WordPress website after I paid money worth for a web application wow. right so I was at the point where you know I was already you know I was already discouraged coupled with the fact that you know I already told my parents oh they should just give me a couple of years for this entrepreneurship thing if it doesn't work out I want to look for a job as they, as they want um, I think I've gone further than the question. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're getting to where short last started. Eh? Yes. And that was my next question. So just so for short for short last, I'll backtrack back again to say that during my internship year. No, I was but, school, but what happened with that business? So it was it was still on. Viewed. You know, I was still you know, trying to work with whatever I created and still trying to. I was even doing it freelance. I would, I was doing style, um, I was styling people right. in. in um, so I, I had friends where I used to live. The, they, are, they are called Deborah's Grace now. There's Posh Apparel. Mm. I used to go there and style their customers. So, so you did pay full me. fashion thing? I wanted to do this fashion. My mother actually didn't understand how, you know, how much of the chemical engineering. I didn't know study fashion. Ha! <laughs> Good. <laughs> but, you know, but I was doing that at the same time. I was working in, um, so I was working in a, an engineering firm, but I didn't like what we were doing, but I was just still there. Um, but back to how shortly I started, I... So while I was um, my fourth year internship year, mm. I served in an oil and gas company. Mm. So we used staff bus. Mm. So I didn't experience the kind of things that I should have experienced. <laughs> but you know, I should backtrack a little bit back again. When I so I I, I was born in Lagos. Mm. My my parents moved to Ibadan because I, maybe oh yeah, work moved them to Ibadan. Mm. So when I was um, meant to do my um, diploma exam in you know, like I came to Lagos. I can remember that day when I was working to the bus stop with my sister. I was asking her, why is everybody working so fast? What's happening? She's Who's like, pursuing you? <laughs> you guys will not understand because people are already used to it. She said, you want that working slow? Everybody's working normal. This is your new year. You have normal one. I'm like, eh. Okay. We go to the bus stop. If I nearly cried that day because before I knew what was happening, I couldn't find my sister. She was already in the bus. I'm like, what's happening? She's like, if you continue like this, you cannot stay in Lagos. You cannot stay in Lagos. I'm like, hey, God. So I was already, I was, you know, I was frightened by the old, you know everything, but I got used to it. By the time I got, got into it, like, I got used to it. I didn't see anything wrong in it anymore. So when I, you know, went for my internship yeah, here, I yes, I using Star Boss. You know, life was good. I even soft went to life. so ah, soft life. When I went off, when I went to the their gas plant, you know, walk to the office. You just so imagine my shock when okay. I finished school. And I, I didn't get that all gas job. No, that, that's not the real. That's not the norm. Yeah, going back to <laughs> yeah, going back to already know the real. I going back to so in, so in my you know going to work, I'm like, and I, I always like to look good. Mm. 
and then I would sit down with the boss. Is that the metal would you know draw my clothes or to stain my clothes? Or somebody would touch you and inappropriately, or the boss controller will uh, shout at you or talk to you anyhow. Or you would end up using three buses for a journey that should take only one bus because you know one me to break, maybe one of them will break down, you have to come down for another bus. So it just the wahala was too much. Fortunately for me, one of my sisters said, Oh, come, I have this. I told you I have a lot of seniors. <laughs> I have this Dubai ticket. I don't I don't I don't have time to go. Yeah. Come on. I said, Ah, what am I doing? Give yeah, me! I <laughs> I, so I went for five days. All the expense paid. My sister paid for the tree. My, my mom, my mom paid for all my, you know, shopping you and hotel. My younger sister, your family. <laughs> so you know, when I got there, I I was I got the shock of my life. That you can you imagine that there's a world where there's an alternative world where there's there are underground trains, mm. like. I don't mind when people travel to Dubai, maybe they see, maybe they enjoy the old fans. That was the main thing that struck me that, you know, we don't have like good sewage system, like underground mm. sewage. But there's a city that they have underground trains that is go underground and come up. That's, that just blew my mind. And by the time I came back to Nigeria, I was sad. Because I couldn't get, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't if, if I knew how to get, you know, a job in Dubai, I've stayed. <laughs> I'm not coming back to Nigeria. So that whole experience, coming back to Nigeria, coming back to using Danfo, I said, no, 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 no. I, I, levels have changed. <laughs> I have to find a way, even though I cannot about, afford to buy a car. I mean, because mm. my parents don't live in, I would have been driving, driving their car. Right. So I, they don't live in Lagos. I had to you know, use um, public transport. And I said, no, I, I, I can't do this anymore. So I called a few of my friends, one of my, my first, co-founder that um, was working in um, Deloitte um, that babe see what are you I, how, how are you getting to work because we, we grew up in Ibadan together mm. I've known her since primary school she so said, what's her name Pusola. Pusola. Okay. so she said ah that's the same thing that she she that's the same thing that she experiences even her colleagues and everything there's a third person um, Damala Kodri that just moved back moved to I won't say moved back she initially wanted to move back, but she, <laughs> <laughs> she went back. <laughs> so so where is she now? She's in the US. Uh -huh. um, so she 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 got she was serving in Nigeria, she was working at Cummins, and she was having difficulty. Imagine someone living that's lived maybe ten years in the US mm -hmm. and having to use you know um, public transport. So we, we came together and said, you know what, let's create something. We, I've, I've used staff bus before. And that time there was Go My Way and there was, right. there was you know, the ride hailing cabs like Uber mm -hmm. and Taxify. But because you, can, you cannot use, you can, if you're a young professional, you can't use um, ride hailing services every yeah, single day to work. It's too expensive. Yeah. And then the ride share Go My Way was still new and people, nobody was ready to share cars with strangers. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, let's create something. I've used this service before. What do you guys think? And we came together um, to create, um, to kind of create that staff bus thing mm -hmm. um, that I've, I've used a few years back and make it open to, to people to use. Amazing. So, I mean, just thinking about the idea, it feels or it seems capital intensive because where did you guys get your first buses? Did you have money? Because nobody, nobody, uh, another person sponsored the business did you guys get funding did you guys so, get savings how, you know, how did it happen um the i think uber really disrupted a lot of you know um things in the technology or transportation world mm -hmm. that it made it um possible for a lot of other companies that came after uber to realize that it was possible to um run a transition tech company mm -hmm. with, without having your own assets right um but the problem was that who was going to give us those assets yeah we don't know anybody our uncle is not dangote <laughs> you know and you know for cars it's simpler because these buses one bus can buy 10, 10 cars mm -hmm. right so who's going to put down their assets for these ladies that is just, just sending an idea um so from the onset it was going to be an asset light um, mm. business model it was just how who were we going to convince mm. to give us those buses because we didn't have shishi the small money that we had was just for to build the website you know um for a few things maybe data for a laptop credit to call customers <laughs> <laughs> definitely not to buy a bus <laughs> not to buy a bus so we didn't think that was not even in the initial plan and it wasn't so um, how does the asset light model actually work? 
So, funny enough, I would, at the beginning, this is what, let me tell you how we, we got buses. Because we actually tried owning buses. Right. Because we found out that, you know, we're finding it very difficult to get um, people that was going to partner with us because, I mean, we didn't have any experience in what mm -hmm. we were about to do. Um, so, we started with cars, actually. Okay. We started with door-to-door -door shuttle, where mm -hmm. people pick you at your doorstep. And I, I used to joke with my, my team and I tell them, see, I was the first bus, con bus conductor in Shuttlers. So nobody can tell me nothing, <laughs> that you can't do anything, because I was the first everything in this company. The only thing I didn't just do was to drive <laughs> the bus. Drive the bus. <laughs> so I usually, the, the driver will come pick me up first and then go and pick the customer. So I was experiencing mm. what was happening and I realized that I could just do to do stop thing. We're going to work. Mm. So by November, November 2015, we ran the first pilot, you know. By January, that's like six years ago. Yep, we were the first pilot. By January 25th, by by January 2017, no money, no customer. <laughs> we were like, ah, we don't think that this business is going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we and prior to that, we had a meeting with the so pilot. So pilot lasted company. one year. No, three okay, months. Three months of so 2015 to 2016. Yes. So we we had a meeting with the bosses in company. Apart from the fact that they, they laughed that we were all, we were all female team, they said they were going to take 90 to 90% of the ah. revenue. So they were doing this as well. And then, and then they should even, we should even go and try it first. But when we are ready, that they will take 90% of the revenue. So, okay. Um, so we went back to the drawing board. Then we used about nine to ten months to go and understand how to run a business in Nigeria. Mm. Like, you know, we applied for a lot of accelerator programs. We got into she leads. We got I got into um, one unreasonable institute thing. Um, so many programs that, you know, I went out there to talk to customers, to corporates, to try to understand what model should we run, who, who, who is our customer. And along those applications and trying to you know, get knowledge, we applied for Asobula Demo Day mm -hmm. in 2016, September. Mm -hmm. Then we got the we won the award for the idea stage. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of so by the next morning when I was from Abuja, I was on the front page of I don't know the newspaper. That got us our first two buses. Ah. <laughs> So the, the particular bus owner that has been stalling to give us, you know, they saw when they say, saw that, like, ah, come, come, come. Those buses, I say, how many buses did you even say you want? Take these two first, just go and try it out. Mm -hmm. He didn't even, he was not going to even receive, he didn't get leasing fees from mm -hmm. us. He just wanted us to just go and try out. The, but he, he had the intention of investing. Right. So he gave us those two buses. We managed the drivers, the fueling, the maintenance, but it was hell. Mm -hmm. We were just on one route, and that's VI and two buses. Every single day, the drivers called me. I had panic attacks. Madam, as I was going to CMS, <laughs> one trailer beside me hit my side. <laughs> okay, so, so all the money we made, they using me to do repairs. repairs, fit management. And because the drivers knew that this girl, what did they know? They were just, they were just ripping us away. Come, this thing cannot work, you know? And we started building up we entered in code, entered the streets, looking for bus partners, the individual bus owners that you know selling our ideas. Trust me, it took a whole lot because there were some that they said they would, they, they promised to, you know, and people told us that this thing cannot work mm. because you don't have if you don't have control of those buses, they will not they won't, yeah. they won't get to the bus stop. But we, it eventually worked. Um, but we had some you know, hiccups at the beginning, but it worked. But October 2016, we started with those buses, but we transitioned gradually into um, partnering with bus owners mm. um, uh, placing them on our platform. Wow, the, the journey. <laughs> it's, this thing I just said now. It's, it's, it's just so much. A lot of diary, drinking, a lot of, you know, <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah. So at what point between this 2015 and now 2021 did you not say, ah, we're finally on something, it's working now? Ah, uh, when we got our biggest deal in 2018. Our first multinational client. Ah! Ha! You're yes. like, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, so what, what's the, what's, what has been the growth like right now? Um, I would say that we've not grown as much as we wanted to grow. Um, I think that 
a number of things stalled that. Mm, like um, COVID-19, for instance. COVID-19 did not even actually helped us. Oh, anyway. really? Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to that. So I think that not having, and you know, when Max Sibo came to, when they say you must have a, a technical co-founder, mm. they know what they're saying, mm. right? Not having a technical co-founder stalled our growth mm. in terms of technology. At right. first, it was cool because at, at the very first, we we're using WhatsApp as a technology and Google Form. Mm -hmm. You didn't need to because the promise was that you book and then you're able to track your bus. Right. We, we we're able to use Google Maps and you know Do share a WhatsApp that. group mm -hmm. and then you can track the bus. But what happens when you now have 1,000, 2,000 mm. staff? And you scale you that. can't scale that without having a good tech. And because people were used to Uber and Taxify. They were going to, we were placing us side by side with Uber. Right. Uber that has gazillions of <laughs> funding and thousands of engineers, right? And we were comparing us to people like that. So that stalled our growth. Um, and then number two is that um, not getting funding stalled our growth. Mm -hmm. On the initial, and initial we couldn't funding. get funding because there was no technical founder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of interwoven. And then another thing, apart from talking before, it was like, we don't think these ladies can do what they said they can, they want to do. First, we're first, uh, this is a very difficult problem to solve. Mm -hmm. People have tried to solve it in the past, they didn't succeed. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to, there's no evidence, I don't blame them honestly. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence that because you're right going to, people yes. To so we had something to prove, um, but, and we didn't have anybody to copy because mm -hmm. there wasn't any, all that company were doing exactly what we're doing. Um, to pull that we can quickly learn or copy what they have on their website. We're just, as we're learning, we're going back to the drawing table and iterating. That's why, you know, I can, I boastfully tell our clients, say, see, we are the best. <laughs> <laughs> we are the best because we know we've, we've gone through. We've gone through the different Yes, stages. we know everything in the market, in this space, we are the best. And um, so, technical co-founder, lack of um, enough funding, I can tell you, um, a, a, a company like us in Swivo, I'm, I mean, I said in Swivo, I call the name of the company, <laughs> in Egypt, you know, started after us and they raised over a over hundred million dollars. Yes. yes. <laughs> they are doing exactly what we are How doing. How come we are guys like this? <laughs> There's nothing, they are doing exactly what we are so doing. So the difference is that, is it the market or the fact, or the team that they have? The team? Because the guy already worked in similar, right. similar. I think he has worked in one of those um, Asian cab hailing services. Mm. So he so had you feel like access. He had industry knowledge. He had access. No, he had access, access. to those investors. Which access do I have? This, this is bad of big. <laughs> <laughs> which access? So he had access to those people, right? He understood the. We, we did not understand all this funding thing. I wanted to want to solve a problem. <laughs> Okay, let's get in angel investors. The only investor that we knew that time was Lagos Angel Network. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't know. And then okay, we knew why come why C and we said, oh, we had to get um, CTOs. I'm like, if I don't have CTO, doesn't mean that the business will not move. I didn't understand what they were saying. If I did, I would have I would have put you know a lot of energy into finding a technical mm -hmm. co-founder to ensure that because that stalled. A lot you know, of things. Yeah. So did, we, did you guys eventually get funding? Um, so we got grants from Ford Motors. Okay. Small funding, 100K. But that 100K... Ah, we when you've used, not seen anything. <laughs> <laughs> we used that 100K to build our revenue to over seven figures in dollars, right? And um, we've used that to do a lot of things. And lastly, like I said, I'm coming to COVID, helped us to change, to rebrand, to re... We design our application and now and because it's, it was kind of like a chicken and egg thing mm. if so if you don't have a co-founder CEO then you have to build your technical team mm -hmm. if you don't have funding you Can cannot be technical team okay so how do you get funding when you don't have <laughs> wow <laughs> so that that was that was just amazing so when you say that covid helped you guys to build and rebrand was it the fact that everything kind of stalled so there was no pressure there was time for you guys to go so back two things was it was the survival mode that we entered that first mm. that that match i'm like okay is this the end of the world mm. are people going to stop moving <laughs> what's going to happen to shortlands 
if people if people are if people are being restricted from moving around, that means they're not going to be be in business. How we, how is that going to affect, affect us? Um, another thing that happened was okay, gave us one more to pause, like because mm. we've not paused since. And the way our work is like every single day we have obligations, mm-hmm. so it's not like okay. Whether it's public holidays, not well, there's our only move. Every day we're working. We work 365 days mm. in a year. Um, so it gave us that time to quickly just go back. Okay, what what can we do to to push growth? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and we revamped our tech, got and uh, spent a lot of you know of our of our money on tech, and then we changed our application and all of that, and rebranded. And then we're ready for the the request that came after um, COVID. COVID, because a lot of people, a lot of organizations, and yeah. uh, um, a lot of people. Another thing that did not also help our growth was because of the fact that we did we understood what was happening with the tech mobility mm. space and we didn't run our buses mm. right and that would have you know amplified so, so people don't know which one is just a normal bus and which one is short we ass. have over a hundred buses running every day on Lagos, but nobody knows hmm. it helps us but does not help us in a way mm. right you see our com- another thing our, com- our computers also helped us mm. Right, because we did we because we saw another competition, we now got to be uncomfortable. Mm. But it also helped us in a way because now investors now see that okay, this is actually a real it's industry, a real industry real that people are trying to enter, mm. and then they are popular because they brand their bosses, mm. right? So in a way, they are, so you just mentioned that you know them, okay, we like them, but we're bigger. <laughs> Speech you need, yeah. you know, but we're bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so those elements just helped us. Are you guys still going to brand your buses, or you just like this semi incognito mode? I think I like it. What well, what that means is that we need to push in more. You know, we need to look at other avenues to drive mm. um, branding, branding and, and marketing and awareness. Mm. And because we focused more on B two B. But now we're uh, now we're um, changing that to, uh, to, to B2C. Um, we didn't see any need for all of that. And because you know, if you want for cost efficiency too, we did a lot of, a lot of um, um, groundwork of marketing door to door, going to offices, than putting billboards or signages or doing social media. Social media so far, it's just awareness. Mm. It has not done any, except we had a lot of money to pour right. into it. And we didn't have, so we had to do um, the door-to-door knocking and all of that to, to get those clients. Amazing. So now you guys are the biggest in the industry. Yeah. Every, over 100 buses running every day in Lagos. Yeah. Um, do you still want to get funding or you're like, see, we're making seven figures. Uh, we're dollars. getting that funding. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's city or no city. No, why would they see that money? We are going, <laughs> we are going to get funding. <laughs> I want to get from now, you know, the conversation is sweeter. I don't talk too so much. This is our revenue. This is what we are doing. This is where we are going to. It's now okay. Um, um, it's now if you have, if it's a good fit for mm. both for both parties. But yeah, we're currently in, in a round. And, and um, before the end of the year, we would we would raise. I'm wow, not sure now if we would announce, but because it's, it's as if as you announce, <laughs> there will be the delicious boss. I don't know if we would announce. <laughs> Or maybe we'll capture the whole of Nigeria and say, actually, you guys, last year we raised. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't know, it happened like six months ago. Yeah. So, but yeah, we are looking at. Um, so, the reason why I want to raise, not because we want to raise, because, mm. yeah, it's because we've seen that. Um, you told me something. You said, see, if you don't get this funding, they will take this business from you like a candy for me. I said it in a funny way, like mm. from, a, from a child's hand or something. And it, it wasn't lying because the speed at which mm. I told you that you know I completed in in Egypt, they got they've gotten over a hundred million dollars, and they are in particularly everywhere. Right. In North Africa, North Africa, they are in Dubai, they are in Egypt, they are in India, they are in, and they are you know expanding with like a speed with speed of light. And if we are not very careful, um, the market that we think that we own. They will come, we'll come and take it. Yeah, so you need a funding to scale the growth and meet Exactly, up. exactly. Because at the end of the day, um, when you know your customers even look at, when they they also they also you have to grow as big as your customers. Mm. Like I said, people have said people compare us to Uber. Mm. So we need to offer the kind of 
um, technology service at that level. Yeah. So we need we need you know um, funding to do that, and we also we want to you know turn out other you know products and services, expand to other cities. Um, so it's like to do that. mad good is waiting for you guys. Yes. Like, nice. Yes. I, I can't wait to hear the amazing stories. Yes. So I mean, you said a lot, and I had a lot of questions, <laughs> but you only talked and answered all my questions. <laughs> So, so let's end like this, right? Well, you've, you've, you've said that the journey hasn't been easy. Like, just thinking back as when you did your pilot in 2015, it's like yeah. six years, right? Now. Yeah. And then you guys even halted for like nine months just yeah. to like go back to learn. Yeah. And then all the you no know, funding, the city of Wahala, yeah. you guys are women, or you ladies are women. We were women because now it's just me. Oh, it's just? So that's another roadblock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the so, first year, my my... So apart from all the things that we're going through in the business, we also had pressure from our family mm -hmm. because it's not. So this week, I think I even put, I even tweeted yesterday or two days ago that I have a special you know, respect for women in business that's gone over like ten years in, mm -hmm. in Nigeria because it's quite different for us. Yeah. The the kind of um, things that you face from family, from your customers or your clients or your team is kind of different from if you're a, a male business, you know, um, person. So, you know, they, we all had, you know, backlash from our family. What are you guys doing? How can you travel? How can you study abroad? You come to Nigeria, you're going to be doing boss, which kind, <laughs> what kind of thing is that, you know? Had a lot of pressure to go back to the US. I know she had to leave um, um, the first year. My second co-founders who left the second year. No, we are still cool. We even had projects yeah. together. No fight. It's just that this hard life. It's for you. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you've been the sole person in the last three years. So that also worked against me for funding. You don't have to take a co-founder, and you're now on this journey by yourself. Thank you. Wow. But I said, you know what? I have, I even have more to prove that. Yeah, that you, know, you can do it. Yes, that I can do. It. And I'm not, I think I'm not even doing it alone for myself. I'm doing it for like upcoming female founders mm -hmm. to say if she can do it then I can do it. the same thing that that lady she didn't know the impact that she had in yeah, her life. Yeah, and yet years down the line you yeah. still remember that. Yeah. Amazing. I feel like even the question was asked. <laughs> See, I think Dami has answered everything. She has given us all the advice that you need. I think the one thing that really strikes me um, in, in your story is just the perseverance, the resilience mm -hmm. that this is a problem that I've encountered different times in my life, and I'm going to solve it. I want to repeat what you know. Jay Z took one interview and he said the only thing that we didn't that we did different was we didn't give up. Mm. That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where we we'll end. That yeah. it doesn't matter what industry you're playing. It doesn't matter whether you're the only person running the business. If you can get other people to make your life easier, go for it. No, right? no, no. I'm the only person who oh. I have a solid team. Yeah, but so you're still not the only co-founder. Co yes, but the way the team runs is that we're all like it's. You probably not even know. Yeah, you won't even know. So you have a CTO now. We have, or oh, it's person that is coming. We have it's, it's still a bit complicated, but we have in-house team, team right now. We have a consultant CTO that transition soon to a big city. If you are watching this and you want to join short last team, <laughs> <laughs> I will mean, do oh, yeah, oh, yeah, go ahead. If you want to join us, we can pay your salary now. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> It's the way that it's the way that means bragging, but then she's not really bragging, but she's just telling you that whatever you just come. Come. Come and call this. Come and join us. <laughs> There's money. I will raise it. Do, um, do more dollars very soon yeah. that's amazing so thank you so much for thank just you. sharing for your me. story and i'm wishing you get you the best thank you so when you raise the cd round or the round you're about to raise and you want to announce just say peace come let me do the interview and announce it here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right thank you so much yeah. you have any final words for us um so in people used to ask me you know what would i do if this doesn't work. Mm. So to just lay out on, on perseverance. And I told them that there's no way short class wasn't going to work. Mm. Um, and when they say, how, 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 why are you so confident it's going to work? I said, because if the bus doesn't work, we'll use bikes. If bike doesn't work, we'll use bicycle. If bicycle doesn't work, we'll use wheelbarrow. People will laugh. <laughs> We something was work. Uh, we and so you were very sure about yeah, the very idea. Sure. I was laser focused. Mm. Um, I did only sh and I still do only short letters, right? And imagine those number of hours. You figure it out if you focus on something. Yeah. You figure it out. Yeah. Right? And, and and that's how and that's what happened. Amazing. Thank you. 
amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. So, laser focus. If you want to do, just be like, I die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just die. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dami, for Thank coming. For it was a me. pleasure learning Thank about you. you and speaking Thank with you. you. Thank you. All right, guys. So, definitely download the Short Last app. Yep. Say hi to Dami on social media. Yeah. Comment, share the video. You know what to do. Just like, <laughs> tell Dami, we see you. And this was an amazing video. And Thank make you. sure you don't leave this channel without subscribing. Yes, Peace out. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Hit our market. Hit our market. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right.